Learning how to install a shower pan starts with good prep work, and installing shower pan systems like the Weedy Fund of Primo begins with totally understanding the curb location in relation to the shower pan location. But a lot of people just dive into this without understanding how the curb location affects the finished look of the tiles, especially if you've got a shower bench like this one here. So today, we're going to show you how to plan the curb location such that your tile looks great in the end. And we're also going to share how we cut out the rest of this floor tile in the bathroom to fit the curb in the shower pan. Because after all, we did not replace the floor tile, we're keeping it. So we're going to start today's video by showing you the Weedy Funda Primo shower system that we installed here in this bathroom. What we bought was a Weedy Fundu Primo kit. And let's just open this up and show you um, what's in this box here. It, it comes with basically all the wall board that you need, the shower pan, uh, the tube to seal it. You get it by, with, with this particular kit, we got a three by four shower pan, mainly because since we're building a bench in that five foot space, we only needed a four foot wide shower pan. So this is three by four. So this is the shower pan, like I said, three, three foot by four foot. And the one nice thing that we'll show you is that you can cut this down to fit whatever size shower um, that you need on it. So it's very easy to customize. Comes with a corner trial, comes with a curb. Now this is a thin curb. This is a, they call it the lean curb. Uh, it's two inches by three and a half inches. And what this will allow, I know it looks real flimsy and small, but what this will allow you to do is just to use a regular four inch curb. Uh, so if you were to, you know, buy marble or something from your big box store, typically they have the sills that are about four inches to four and a half inches wide. So it makes it nicer because you're able to maximize the shower space uh, within your shower versus having a really wide curb for it. Uh, and then it comes with, uh, this particular unit will come with six sheets of the, the weedy panels. So it also comes with a couple extra features that don't come with, you can order separately on a lot of other things, but it has a little collar to go around your pipe. So if we were doing a tub spout, uh, you can actually also use this on your shower head as well, but it's just like a little sealing collar. And then this would be for your mixing valve. So this is just a, a something that you thin set to you can either thin set it or you can use the sealant to do it, but it's, it's usually easier just to thin set this over the board so you can seal around your valve. So when you get a hundred, this is inch and five eighths screws. You know, most of the time, if you're just using, if you just have regular studs, um, metal studs, you can just use these inch and five eighths screws. And it also comes with the washers. So you have a hundred count of these washers to fasten everything with. And then the standard drain kit, this gets bonded to, to the pan. That's how you connect it to the drain. And it comes with a, this is basically kind of like a stainless steel. You know, I don't know, I guess you could consider this more of like, yeah, just a stainless steel finish. It's kind of in between chrome and uh, brushed nickel, but it, it's definitely like a stainless look. This is what comes with the standard kit. So if you wanted a different color, if you wanted like oil rub bronze, or if you did want like a shiny chrome, uh, you'd have to order that separately, but the kit comes with these. And then this little guy, we'll show you this as well, but this allows you to extend the drain higher. So if you had like big pebble stone floor or you had some kind of thick slate or something that you're doing there, this will allow you to, to raise that up off of the shower pan so you can uh, tile around that. And then like I said, yeah. Eight tubes, this should be enough to do all of your sealing with the pan. As you can see here, Steve is measuring inside or underneath the subfloor, marking the location of the joist. And the reason why he's doing that is we had to cut out a portion of this subfloor to access the plumbing for the old tub. So you can use a standard sawzall with a sawzall blade to, to cut out the three sides of that subfloor and then just tear it up by hand after that. Uh, you can clean up a little bit of this using an oscillating multi-tool like the Multimaster by Fine. Really does a nice job of doing that. And then finally we cut out the old ABS plumbing or drain rather with the oscillating multi-tool. So what we're doing here is cutting down the shower pan 
curb to size. And then Steve is using a chalk line to mark a chalk line and cut down the half inch weedy backer board for the side of the shower bench. And we'll explain why here in a moment, but we're using four screws and washers to attach it to the framing. Really easy to do, really easy to cut down with the, the multi-tool. Now that we have the bench created, uh, we're gonna show you what to cut the pan sides for this kind of situation. Uh, basically, the kit comes with this two inch by three and a half inch curb. So this is considered their lean curb. And as you can tell, it's pretty small. But the idea of this is to be able to get a smaller top, curb top. So this is, uh, this is actually a five inch top, but you can go down to four inches because by the time you have tile on either side of this, you'll have, what, basically seven eighths. So you have two and seven eighths of total thickness here. And with a four inch top, you'd have like a half inch overhang on either side. That'd be correct. Two and seven eighths would be an inch. Yeah, so it'd be like uh, nine sixteenths of an overhang on your curb if you were going with a four inch top. So, but this is basically what it's gonna look like. This is gonna allow me to towel either side of this and have an overhang on it. Cause you wanna have an overhang. You don't really wanna have your your top plate being, you know, basically even with your towel kind of looks a little ugly. Having an overhang like a countertop is the, pretty much the way to go. So, but this would probably be more or less the look that you would have if you had a four inch top on either side. So anyways, to show you what size to make the pan in this situation, you have to consider that overhang on your curb top because if you brought this if you just brought your curb flush with the edge of your bench you'd end up with a kind of an ugly overhang on your curb and there's really no way to finish that i mean it's just kind of sticking out there you're going to have tile on here obviously which would bump it out another quarter inch but you're just going to have an unfinished edge on your curb top so you want to be able to account for that reset or for that overhang and bring your curb inside of that bench area so that when you put this in it just kind of butts straight up to the edge uh, so to maximize your shower area just bring your curb top to the edge of the weedy you're still going to have some quarter inch tile or three eighths tile whatever thickness of your tile is it's still going to stick outside of this but to be safe I would just go flush with your edge of your weedy on your bench. So in this situation, we're basically going to be sticking in approximately about an inch from the edge of your outside of your bench. So then from there you measure to the, so we've got 34 and a half overall on the shower bench. So this is 35 and a half on the bench, 34 and a half on the curb to the edge of your curb. So our pan that we'll be cutting is gonna be 33, just about 33 inches. So we're gonna be cutting three inches off of our pan. So, but again, the idea of recessing this curb in is basically for the tiling process to make that look good. So now that we have the idea of where we want our curb, let's go ahead and cut out this existing floor so that this and I'm gonna give myself a little extra room just like I did on the other side. There's no reason to be 100% tight to this because you're still gonna have tile that goes on the edge of this that will cover your existing floor. So we need to cut out all these tile to set this down into place. So as you can see here, Steve is using the angle grinder. We're just using the WSG7 by Fine and also the CGX115 Diamond Blade by Montelite to cut out the rest of this tile and you'll find that using a sponge like steve is doing here really cuts down on the dust but be very careful remember steve is a professional he's done this many many times you also want to use a respirator when you're using an angle grinder inside but this does a great job of cutting that tile down the size so this is not the way you install a hardy backer they just stapled this stuff in so it's super easy to get out. You're supposed to thin set your, your hardy backer down, but some people do it the way they want to. 
So what are your thoughts? Do you like Wheaties Lean Curb? It's two inches wide and three inches deep. We feel that it makes smaller showers look bigger, but we'd love to know what you think down in the comments. Our next video is gonna show you how to custom cut the Weedy Fundo Primo shower pan. There are gonna be a lot of great tips in that. If you missed our prior video, we show you how to frame a shower bench seat and you can watch that as well. That's a really phenomenal video if you wanna put a bench in your shower. Now, if you are doing a complete bathroom remodel and you want help with that and you want access to all of our videos, you can join Bathroom Repair Tutor. That is a phenomenal resource for anybody who wants to save time and money while doing a bathroom remodel. So that's it for today. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.